This is Scott Vanderplu, and you're listening to the Artist Edition Index Podcast, Episode 83. I went down to the St. James Infirmary, found my baby there, stretched out on a long white table, so sweet, so cold, so fair. Thank you for joining me once more as we bring all things from AEindex.org. <clears throat> to living voice. I used to say bring to life with as much life as I can muster, but I don't know. Mix it up, doing whatever. I uh, I just got a, a microphone arm for my desk, so I've hooked my, uh, I use a blue uh, snowball microphone. So I've got it hooked to the arm today, so we'll see if that's working out better than the stack of books I normally make to have this support it. All right. Um... Let's dive into this month of happenings. Uh, quite a few items happened, but uh, I thought we'd open with the poll. The AE Index poll for October 2023 was one of the AE format innovations was the scanning of original art as color images to reproduce blue pencil marks, corrections, and notes made by the creatives. Most of the reproduced pages have been comics created to be colored for reproduction. How about a collection of artwork that was intended to be reproduced in black and white? Looks like I've got some grammatical errors there. Uh, this one is a little different as I'm listing story names, artists, and the black and white magazine it appeared in. Ideally, these would be presented with others in a collection or on their own in the old artist edition portfolio format. If you're not familiar with the story, you owe it to yourself to highlight the name and search the internet. Choices were <clears throat> Demon in a Silvered Glass by John Bolton from Bizarre Adventures. That had the top votes, 27. Following closely at 25 was Second Chance by Steve Ditko from Creepy. Third was uh, Electra by Frank Miller from Bizarre Adventures. Fourth was Phantom of Pleasure Island by Alex Toth and Creepy. And then last place, six votes, was Demons of the Psychodrome by Mike Plug from Planet of the Apes. Uh, Alex Sheikman provided some of the text and some ideas for this. So thanks to Alex for that. I think I'm running out of ideas from uh, polls, so I may have to go back to asking if people had any ideas for polls or go back to our, our friends who have provided things in the past. Okay, that's the poll. I voted for uh, Demon in a Silvered Glass. I love that John Bolton story. It just It's so gorgeous. But uh, looking at this other stuff, I mean, I, I, I knew the uh, Frank Miller Electric story as being really the only black and white uh, Electra story out there. It was that was a bizarre adventure. It's a great magazine. And then uh, I had read the Toth and the Ditko stories in the um, those creepy collections. So the only thing I wasn't completely familiar with was Mike Plug. And again, I'm not really a Mike Plug fan, um, but I did look at a bunch of stories and I thought that one looked great. Anyways. That's the poll. Uh, it stays live. I mean, I, I put it up from the 16th or 17th as I did this month. And uh, it goes, uh, it stays right at the top of the blog, the website, until uh, the end of the month. And then just goes into its normal spot. So there you go. That's the poll for this month. Um, I had, let's talk about the news for this month. I had a deal alert up. Uh, it, it's come and gone, so don't be too excited. But uh, P. Craig Russell... Uh, Salome and other stories, fine art edition was on sale for $30 uh, USD on eBay, which is just ridiculous. That's, it's like they're giving it away. Um, the book was awesome. My review uh, said so. And uh, Lurid Media, formerly Wayne Allen Harrell Productions, put that up. And it was in the newsletter. They went fast. All right. <clears throat> solicitations for this month. There's uh, three solicitations. We had something from IDW, we had something from 2000 AD, and we had something from Diamond, which in this case was from uh, Rude Dude Productions. So let's start with Diamond. And that was uh, Nexus, The Coming of Gramondo Deluxe Edition. Now this came out in, geez, a long time ago. Uh, let's check my review here. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, 2021. This is a crowdfunding. It was first on Kickstarter, then it was on Indiegogo, and um, I think uh, I paid. I got in on an early bird deal, so I didn't pay too much for it. But um, 
it kept going on sale from direct from Steve Rude. And now it's being offered through Diamond. So you've got two options. You've got the regular edition, which is what I'm going to read the blurb for here. Something long dormant beneath the surface of Yulum comes alive, triggering a visit from the planet of Iron Gormando and his mysterious ally. With powers far beyond those of even Nexus himself, this unstoppable being banishes Nexus to an unknown realm, and the only way out is to face one's worst fears. Mike Barron and Steve Rue deliver a new Nexus adventure in the special oversized collection. With over 320 pages, this deluxe hardcover edition is nearly triple the size of most artist editions books at the same price. Includes pencils, inks, and colors for all 90 story pages, plus over 20 pages of extras. This edition comes in over 10 pounds. It's solicited to be available through Diamond on December 20th. It's 11 by 17, 320 pages. It's a hardcover. They're selling it for $299.99. Now, back when this was solicited and when these words actually came out, which was 2020, uh, it may have been true that uh, it was about the same price, I think. But at 300 is not uh, uh, the same price as Artist Edition, so that's double Artist Edition. So uh, it's a it's on for a heavy discount on things from another world. I got the link. It's discounted to 204.99. As well, they have the uh, limited deluxe Artist Edition is a signed numbered edition of only 250 and includes a plate signed by writer Meg Barron and artist Steve Rude stitched into the book. It also includes a slipcase and is shrink wrapped. This is also available December 20th, uh, $349.99. Things from Another World has it on sale for $244.99. So if you're interested in either one of these ones, I would go to my website, click my link, and get those uh, get those at a steep discount from Things from Another World. Uh, read my review. I had lots of things to say about this book um, that they put too many extras in that didn't belong in an AE format book. It should have been, the extras should have been included uh, like in a, in the um, trade paperback or something. All right. Next solicitation, IDW. And this one we've already seen before uh, as an announcement, but now we actually see the solicitation from or through Penguin Random House. And that is Batman, David Mazich Kelly's Batman Year One Artist Edition. Let me give you the blurb. It hasn't changed. An artist edition featuring the groundbreaking reinterpretation of Batman's origin origin blah, 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 by comic book titans Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli. The entire groundbreaking story is included in this 14 by 21 inch collection, the same size as most of the pages were drawn. In 1986, Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli produced this groundbreaking reinterpretation of the origin of Batman, who he is and how he came to be. Sometimes careless and naive, this dark knight is far from the flawless vigilante he is today. In his first year on the job, Batman feels his way around a Gotham City far darker than the one he left. His solemn vow to extinguish the town's criminal element is only half the battle. Along with Lieutenant James Gordon, the Dark Knight must also fight a police force more corrupt than the scum in the streets. Batman Year One stands next to Batman the Dark Knight Returns on the mantle of greatest Batman graphic novels of all time. This edition includes the complete graphic novel and a new introduction by David Mazzucchelli. All of Mazzucchelli's layouts are presented, giving true insight into a master storyteller's process from initial spark to completed page. This is an art book featuring rare and beautiful imagery, a collection for connoisseurs of the form. Chip Kidd, the legendary designer, will be guiding the look of the project. This volume collects Batman number 404 to 407. It's only four issues. Solicited for July 2nd, it's 14 by 21, 144 pages, 150 U.S., uh, into some things to note on this. I find it interesting that it says this edition includes the complete graphic novel. So if they're including the complete graphic novel, which is more than just Batman 40447, it's all of Mazzucchelli's notes and things. If you've got if you've got Batman Year One in um, the hardcover or the trade, uh, you'll, you know what I'm talking about. There's a whole lot extra in there, and I'm wondering if that's what they mean by saying the complete graphic novel. Also, what does... Chip Kidd, the legendary designer, will be guiding the look of the project. Is he designing it or not? What does guiding the look mean? Does that mean he wrote down on a napkin, uh, I would make the book look like this and like like put four drawings on a napkin and now he's guiding the book? It seems a bit um, nebulous in that description. Hopefully we get more details soon. Uh, they did finally release a higher resolution cover of the book, but again, they're always showing this two-page spread for the cover, which doesn't make much sense. 
And what I find interesting about the cover image that they're showing is that's Mazzucchelli's um, uh, drawing for the trade paperback. And he actually indicates in the, I forget where I read it, but I think it's in the back of the year one graphic, no, um, graphic novel trade. Uh, that that's actually a very small image. So they're blowing the image up to use as the cover. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, third solicitation. Woo, what a month. 2080, June 2024 solicitations. Now, I don't, I, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I, I thought normally I put the month that it was mentioned in. Maybe that should be 2080, October 2023 solicitations, but too late now. All right. <clears throat> that is the 2080 art of Steve Dillon, Apex Edition. One of the most admired artists in comics history. Oh, this blurb is really long. I don't think I'm going to read this whole blurb. Steve Dillon is rightfully considered to be one of the definitive 2080 artists with his extensive work for the galaxy's greatest comic, <laughs> including pencils on ABC Warriors, Bad Company, Judge Dredd, Harlem Heroes, Robusters, Rogue Trooper, and Tyranny Rex. Uh, let's skip here. This feels like oof, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, it doesn't really say much. Uh, measuring a huge 19 by 14 in Europe, they always do the length and the width. And we, in North America, we seem to do the width and the length. This is a landmark collection of some of Dylan's most admired artwork from a storied career in comics running across 128 incredible pages. Uh, release date of June 19th, 14 by 19, 128 pages, 115 us. So the price again is bouncing all over the place. Um, this the last book it's come there's a book coming out next month or this month actually November it's 155 this one is now 115.99 the price the price just keeps moving they do not have a set price here that's for sure again there's going to be a slipcase edition that's got a uh, different cover and it comes in a slipcase and that's 157.99 now those prices are what is listed on the 2080 website when this hits diamond those prices will be higher well the regular edition will be higher because they don't offer the slipcase edition through Diamond. But I would expect to see that price go up when that hits Diamond. All right, those are the solicitations. I'm having some uh, some issues speaking this evening, so please excuse uh, my fumbling. All right, let's check um, shipping changes, shall we? Uh, oh, it was the 2080 yard of Kevin O'Neill. That's been confirmed for November 8th. And that's the book that is 155 currently. That did go up from what the initial price was. And then no other shipping changes. So that's pretty good. We've got a good list of books coming here. I currently have 12 up in my um, upcoming book section. I can't quite remember the last time we had 12 in this section. But also you have to realize that we're, we've just hit November. It's November 1st. And the dates are already stretching to July. So... Interesting stuff there. All right. Let's talk out of uh, print sales. <clears throat> One copy of the, Ill of the Illustrated Story uh, sold for two ninety five. That's oof, that's really moving up. One copy of Basil Wolverton's Weird Worlds for two nineteen ninety nine. Two copies of Batman the Dark Knight Returns for one hundred five ninety nine average. That is really since Graffiti Designs started clearing stuff out. That price has really dropped. I'm guessing Graffiti sold a skit or two of that book to somebody and that's why we see them just uh, dumping it on eBay. Uh, two copies of Bernie Wright's and Artifact Edition Second Print averaging 177 One copy of Best of EC Artist Edition Volume 2 for nine ninety nine ninety nine. Somehow, Volume 2 has eclipsed Volume 1 in sales numbers. That is a crazy price. I don't know what's going on there. One copy of Bill Sienkiewicz's Mutants and Moon Knights and Assassins for $399.99. One copy of Conan Red Nails, a book that's seen a lot of activity lately. That's two forty nine sixty seven. Two copies of Dave Cockrum's X Men Artifact Edition, averaging one thirty seven fifty. One copy of Don Rose's The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck for two forty nine ninety nine. One copy of Gene Colan's Tomb of Dracula for two fifty. One copy of Gil Kane's Amazing Spider Man for seventy nine ninety seven. Two copies of Jack Davis's Easy Stories, averaging two fifty. Three copies of Jack Kirby The Forever People, averaging one thirty six sixty six. One copy of Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four, the world's greatest artist edition, for three ninety nine ninety nine. That's the twice up one, fifteen by twenty two. Four copies of Jack Kirby's Marvel Heroes and Monsters, averaging one ninety eight seventy five. Two copies of Jack Kirby's The Mighty Thor, averaging one ninety five. All three books I just mentioned of Jack Kirby; those are all fifteen by twenty twos. Jim Lee DC Legends, two copies, averaging one thirty two fifty. One copy of John Byrne's Fantastic Four for one ninety nine. 
Two copies of John Romina's Amazing Spider-Man, averaging to twelve fifty. One copy of Judge Dredd by Brian Boland, three hundred eight ninety five. One copy of Lone Wolf and Cub, one hundred nine oh three. One copy of Mad Artist Edition for one hundred fifty. Two copies of Mark Schultz's Xenozoic Tales, averaging two hundred sixty two fifty. Four copies of Marvel Covers Artist Edition First Print, averaging one hundred forty nine twenty five. Two copies of Michael Golden's Micronauts Artist Edition, averaging three hundred forty nine ninety nine. I don't know why that price has jumped. Whoa. One copy of Mike Mignola's Hellboy and Helen of the Stories first print, two fifty. Two copies of the second print, averaging one fifty. Two copies of Mignola's The Amazing Screwhead. I'm I'm sorry. Mike Mignola's The Amazing Screw on Head and Other Curious Objects, averaging one twenty nine ninety nine. One copy of P. Craig Russell's Murder Mysteries and Other Stories for ninety nine ninety nine. Two copies of P. Craig Russell's Strange Dreams Artist Edition, averaging one thirty nine twenty five. One copy of Robocop vs. the Terminator for two thirty five oh three. One copy of Sergio Aragona's Grew the Wanderer for one sixty six ninety eight. Three copies of Spawn Vault Edition, averaging two ninety five sixty seven. One copy of Spawn Vault Edition two for three twenty nine. Two copies of Star Wars Dark Times Gallery Edition, averaging thirty three twenty five. Man, that book just just so the price just hangs low. It's also a very small book as far as dimensions go. Four copies of Stranko Nick Fury Agent of Shield first print, averaging one seventy four seventy five. Three copies of the second print, averaging two fourteen oh nine. I guess people like the darker color on that second print cover because that's the only difference. Uh, one copy of Terry Moore's Strangers in Paradise for one twenty five. One copy of the Book of Ballads. Thirty nine ninety nine. That's wow. That's dirt cheap. That book is so amazing. One copy of the Prisoner for one forty five fifty. Two copies of Usagi Jimbo Samurai and other stories, averaging one ninety seven ninety seven. One copy of Wallywood's Easy Stories second print for three twenty five. One copy of Walter Simonson's Star Wars for one twenty nine. One copy of Walter Simonson Manhunter and other stories for one forty nine ninety nine. One copy of Walter Simonson's The Mighty Thor Artist Edition first print for one seventy five. One copy of the second print for one eighty nine ninety five. And that is the month out of print sales. We did hit a sales record, which is paused and marveled at earlier. That's Best of EC Artist Edition Volume 2, $9.99.99. Woo, that is, uh, I, I can't get over that. That's crazy money. All right. Uh, things are moving along here on the, on the old, old podcast here. Uh, where I'm about up to reviews, and that means that this is the opportunity for me to promote the website. How can you help the Artist Edition Index? At aindex.org, three ways. If you're going to order a book, please use one of my affiliate links. Like if you order from Things from Another World, man, that that really helps me. That's awesome. Amazon, I have pretty well at the bottom of the list. But Things from Another World, that's primo. Uh, another way to help me, please go to the store. That's aindex.org slash store. I have books there that I want to sell. I prefer to sell them via my site, but I'm going to have to start putting them on eBay. Because I've been holding on to some for quite a while and I want to move them and get clear of the space. So please take a look at the store if you have an opportunity and buy a book. I have EC, I have lots of good books on there. EC, Best of EC Artist Edition Volume 1, David Mazzucchelli's Daredevil Born Again, uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil Artifact Edition, that's the, the first printing, not the reprint, that's an artist edition. Uh, geez, I um, Jack Kirby's Fantastic Four Artist Edition, Joe Kubert's Stars in the Apes, John Byrne's Fantastic Four. I got a copy of Michael Golden's Marvel Heroes Artist Edition on sale for one hundred five because that's what I paid for it. I'm just trying to recoup my costs there. I ended up getting two copies of that book, which is my segue for my two reviews this month. And the th- But the third way to help me is to become a Patreon patron. Uh, I don't do a lot for the patrons. If I get a tidbit of news, I do pass along only to the patrons. But um, those are the three ways, and it's greatly appreciated. All right, into the reviews this month. First review is up, Michael Golden's Marvel Stories Artist Edition. Now, I'm two months behind on this book. It was released in August. I didn't get around to reviewing it until October 21st because I had some mail issues with this. But I got this and Walter Simonson's Fantastic Four Artist Edition in rapid succession the same week. And it looks like my mail issues are resolved, and now it's just smooth sailing. All right, let me give you the blurb for this book. The work of one of the most influential artists in comics gets the artist edition treatment. Michael Golden is a true artist artist. Oh, I don't like that term. His work has inspired several generations of comic artists and fans across the globe eagerly await his new releases. Uh, that's not me. 
This artist edition of Golden's Marvel work will include four stories, two short Nam stories from Strange Adventures. They're not from Strange Adventures. That's just the blurb. And the Wolverine Christmas story, including one is most fondly remembered, the Spider-Man Hulk from Marvel Fanfare 47, considered to be one of his very best. Additionally, <clears throat> this collection will include pages from Doctor Strange 55, Avengers Annual 10, and Covers Galore. If you're a Michael Golden fan, this is the artist edition you've been waiting for. Those complete stories are actually from Savage Tales? Yes, one in four, so not Strange Adventures. All right. This book was released again on August 8th. It's 12 by 17. It's 176 pages. It's a hardcover. Um, it is nice. I, like, um, as I say in the review, there's a, um, there's a lot of material here. And it's organized a little bit differently than what we've normally seen. It opens up with just random pages from Avengers Annual, Doctor Strange, Marvel Fanfare, and the NOM. Or the NAM, I don't know. Um, pages from Doctor Strange 55, which is my favorite golden Doctor Strange story. It's so awesome. Those pages just pop for me. Uh, the Marvel Fanfare stuff I enjoy too. The, the NAM stuff I like. Uh, early golden, I'm not a big fan of early golden, so I can't see these Avengers Annual pages do anything for me. But... Um, it is nice. It's a nice work. Uh, fanfare. Yeah, the sweet spot for me is the Nam. And uh, all right, then the book moves into covers, and then we get a lot of different covers. And again, we got um, it's very heavily Punisher oriented, but we get some foldouts, and these are gorgeous. We got a Marvel fanfare cover, a Hulk calendar illustration, eh, a Punisher anniversary magazine cover, eh, and a Wolverine ninety six cover. These foldouts, these are not the foldouts for me. I gotta say. Now, uh, the covers are interesting covers. The NAM covers, I really enjoy those. Punisher stuff, uh, it's a little it's a little bit newer. And like I said, it's funny. Uh, I don't know how much of my take is from nostalgia for Golden in this period. But I like uh, middle Golden. I don't really like early Golden, and I'm not crazy about later Golden. But uh, the beauty of that book like this is it just covers his entire career, and there's something for everybody. Then the next section of the book is, it's got pinups, portfolio pages, Portfolio plates, sorry, sketches and rarities. And this is where, oof, man, I, I, anybody who's got that golden uh, Doctor Strange portfolio. The covers in here at the uh, as, as a foldout, it's giant and gorgeous. And there's just, there's a ton of great stuff here. Uh, this stuff is, this does, does pop for me. I love these, the golden, uh, the, those Doctor Strange pages are so great. And the foldouts here. Avengers Annual 10. Uh, X-Men Companion, number one cover. Generation X, 95 cover. Um, there's some really early drawings. Uh, the X-Men foldout is just so amazing. I just... The two of these foldouts here. Now you're hitting me. The X-Men Companion foldout and the Doctor Strange portfolio cover. This is uh, this is the price of the book alone for me. These two foldouts. Just gorgeous. And then we get into um, the f- section four of the book, which is Complete Stories. We've got Marvel Fan for 47, which is pretty previously mentioned, the Marvel Holiday Special. And then we've got two stories from Savage Tales of the Nom. This is where it appeared before it had its own title. Uh, these I'm complete stories are awesome. There's the the Marvel Fan for stories opens with Nick Fury in space. And I mean the uh, Fury the, the detail in Fury's costume in some of the panels is just amazing. It looks so great. Just the space stuff really pops. Actually, this whole fanfare. Really, really nice, and like like I said, the, there's golden work here for everybody. It is, um, but I really enjoy the, um, the these uh, Savage Tale stories of the Nam, or the Nam. I don't know. Was it the Nam? I'm gonna go with. It. I, sh- I I guess I should have went with the Nam. Um, the pages look good, but like as I say in the review, there's almost like something. There's just something that's detracting from some of the scans, and I don't. I don't know what it is. Uh, it's just, I can't put my finger on it. A gorgeous book. If you're a fan of Michael Golden, which apparently there's quite a few of you out there, and uh, it's very nice. Um, I do a flip through again. Any book now, I'm doing flip through. So you can't go wrong with watching the flip through, hitting my review up, uh, looking at all the pictures, reading what I've got to say. All right, second review for this month. Walter Simonson's Fantastic Four Artist Edition. Let me give you the blurb here. This is an art book, not a traditional collection of comic books. 
featuring rare and beautiful imagery, a collection for connoisseurs of the form. I don't, I, I don't like that statement. This is a um, Simonson's groundbreaking work of Fantastic Four and other Marvel titles helped revolutionize the comics medium and his work is on full display here in all its original high resolution glory. Collecting eight complete stories from Walter Simonson's run on Fantastic Four, 337 to 341 and 353 to 354. Story and art by Simonson. Uh, I actually changed the blurb to, to say collecting eight complete issues because this is not eight complete stories. It tells two stories. Fantastic Four 337 to 341 is one story over a period of four issues. I'm sorry, six issues. And then 353 to 354 is a second story told over two issues. So that's two stories, not eight stories. All right. This was released October 3rd. It's 12 by 17, 204 pages, $150 US hardcover. Gorgeous. Now this book, I... Very clean, very straightforward. Boom. Get us into the book. Give us one cover that's not from these issues. That's Marvel Age 80 cover. To open the book up. And then you turn the page and there's the cover of the issue. On the left, issue starts on the right. When the issue ends, there's a chapter divider um, recapping some art from the previous, from that issue. And then you move into the next issue. Eight issues, full issues, nothing missing. Boom, boom, boom. Two complete stories. This is everything an artist edition should be. Right? Full issues. Nothing missing. Just gorgeous. Giving us complete stories. All the stuff that, you know, those early... Uh, I'm waxing poetic, but those early artist editions. I mean, Wally Wood didn't do this. I mean, really, right? And Wally Wood gave us something else. But at least we had stories, right? This is a this is a multi-issue story told over, you know, like, it's just amazing to see this in this kind of format. And, all, you know, it's all lettered. It's just, you sit down and you open this up and you just read it. Because this is a collection of comics. It's not a art book. I would say the Artifact Editions or... Um, you know, an artist edition that has no complete issues where it's just page after random page is an art book because you can't read it. Yes, you can read the dialogue on the page, but that's, you know, you're, it's constantly different issues. That is an art book. That is something you're flipping through and not reading to enjoy. This is a, this is a, this is an, this is a comic art. I don't know now. I see still using the art book form. This is a yeah, original comic art book, I guess. I don't know. There's, there's no way to do it. This is an artist edition. Let's put it that way. Exactly as it should be. Take a look at the reviews. Look at my flip through. Uh, Simon's art. Gorgeous. He's, there's a couple of pages where he's got he's got the Kirby hand, you know, outstretched, fingers separated, just reaching out there. I mean, ah, oh, I, I love the Kirby hand. I actually, uh, looking at this again, reminded me of how many commissions I used to get of uh, the outstretched Kirby hand. And the story is so great because it, it's Fantastic Four. It's, 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 it's galactic. It's in its scope. It's ginormous, right? It's, there's a celestial, there's Galactus, there's all kinds of stuff happening, giant machinery. And it just, uh, it just pops from these pages. Uh, Scott Dunbeer, the editor of the book, uh, scanned all the pages himself, which were provided by Simonson because he keeps his art and, uh, just, just wonderful. This book is. Please head up the site, uh, look at this and all the other things I mentioned this month. Um, everything I talked about is at aeindex.org. Sign up for the newsletter. It goes out every Saturday and it recaps the week. Don't miss out on anything that's happening. Take advantage of what's offered here. Uh, help with the site where you can. Thanks, and we'll talk to you next month. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be. Da, da, da. She can search this wide world over She'll never find a sweet man like me